your laptop probably doesn't run off a row of medieval uh, cannons, but if you were to mention a battery to somebody about 150 years ago, they might just, that might just come to mind. Of course, these days, if you say battery, uh, you think you know what you're talking about. Or can you really assume that? We've got rechargeables, we have single use, we have small button cells, we have batteries inside devices. I mean, we have many different types of batteries for different uses. They make our lives easier, they make our lives more mobile, and they can make our lives more dangerous if you don't know quite how to use them. So I'm going to give you a bit of information about the most common type of batteries and how you can get the most out of them. So most of our devices that are portable are run off rechargeable batteries. Uh, cell phones, cameras, laptops. And though they're more expensive than your typical buy a bulk pack, they are reusable. And so that's their biggest advantage. I mean, we have our alkaline single-use ones. They get one life cycle. They don't need any special maintenance, but you do have to be careful when you throw them out because they can be toxic. Nickel cadmium rechargeables were the first big popular step. They could have many cycles, up to 1,500, but they required maintenance to get them to reset and be in good condition about monthly, and you couldn't just throw them away. You had to use a special recycling program. Uh, a little while later came a nickel metal hydride type. This is a whole family. And while they had many fewer cycles per battery, they were a lot less toxic and would run a bit better on their own, um, only quarterly maintenance instead of monthly. Finally, and what I'll be concentrating on, lithium ion technology is the newest development. It's still being uh, fine-tuned, so you can get anywhere from 300 to, in some cases, more than 1,000 cycles. But there's no special maintenance needed for these at all and they're very low to toxicity. You can even throw them out and it won't actually affect the environment, although it's much better to recycle them. As they are the newest technology, there are still many myths and other wives' tales floating around from the older ones. For example, you might have been told to always fully discharge a laptop battery or to keep it plugged in as much as you can. You might have been told to never discharge it, look out for the memory effect, or look out in case it explodes, which is in fact a real threat here. Although, this memory effect, I'll take a side note and say that if you have not heard of it, it's the idea, if you only discharge a battery to halfway all the time, it will develop a memory of that position and will never be able to be discharged past that. So, we'll start with the worst. What are some dangerous things you can do? Don't charge your batteries below the freezing temperature. Though it, you might not see any effect at the time, it will form a dangerous metallic lithium plating on the inside, and that will interfere and possibly cause harmful operation. Don't use it at excessive temperatures. Above 130 degrees Celsius, you risk running into a zone where your battery, this thermal instability zone, the battery will just heat up and start a runaway chain chemical reaction. Also, don't puncture your battery, drop it, hit it with a hammer. Uh, of course, this is bad. It, will, it could result in tiny fragments of material contaminating the inside of the cell. Just like that metallic coating, this can lead to harmful side effects. And the primary harmful side effect we're caring about here is this thermal instability, which is the buildup of heat due to chemical reactions, and it can lead to this process called venting with fire, which is also known as spontaneous thermal runaway, and made the news in 2008 when 100,000 or so batteries were recalled by Sony because this happened. Uh, this is, uh, in fact, a manufacturing defect that left material inside the battery, which caused contamination and led to this thermal runway condition. They've taken care of that and have much more stringent quality assurance now. Less, less dangerous, but still bad, you can damage the usability of your battery by frequently deep discharging it. This is the difference between some of the old technologies and today's. You actually are better off only using a bit of your charge and recharging right away. If you do a full discharge, the amount of power it takes to start it and charge it again will actually begin to wear out your cell. Also, less of a problem on laptops or cell phones, but if you 
have your own project and you're using lithium batteries, if you pull too much current or voltage out of them, it will also wear them down faster. Now onto what actually does help you. Like, as we mentioned before, a shallow discharge instead of a deep one will make it your battery last longer and also let you worry less that one is going to fail. If you're not going to use it for a long period of time, a couple of weeks, then you should take care to use the proper storage techniques, which, though I'm not going to go into detail about the chemistry of why this works, a cool, dry place, uh, preferably under 15 degrees Celsius, and at 40% charge capacity, this is the magic number, at, uh, at which you'll get the best lifetime when you come back to using it. And again, at the same point, Laptops will regulate this themselves, but if other devices use them as they're designed to be used, don't draw more than they're supposed to give. Uh, for example, if you're using here uh, the recommended amount of charge, the battery capacity per number of charge cycles stays pretty high. If you exceed that, you start to lose performance, and if you demand high current, high power a lot, you'll see a rapid decline. If you have been keeping it in good condition, then you can get an ideal, uh, ideal situation and estimate about how long your battery will last. You'll have to know the capacity, which is given in watt hours, and the average power draw of your device. So for our example here, if you have a 10 watt hour battery and you draw 5 watts with, uh, without going into fine calculation, you'll get about 2 hours. If you're using well, these aren't the exact same statistics here, but the longer you, the time charge you'll get per amount of charge you use, if you're only using 0.2 versus 0.28, or a whole recommended amount of charge. And for the, to go into detail now on the storage advice, as we mentioned, Lower temperatures are better for batteries if you're not actually using them, if you're not charging them. Most people will charge to full 100%, and you can see after a year of storage, they'll only be able to gain back 9%, 94%, 84%, 80 or 65 As compared to charging it to their recommended 40%, you can gain back 98, 96, or even 85 as compared to that 65 if you don't follow this recommendation. And finally, for the overall lifetime descriptions, lithium ion batteries have a weakness of being on a clock of sorts as soon as they leave the factory. The chemistry does react slowly with itself, and that will mean it doesn't have an indefinite shelf life. However, if you are actively using them, you can count on a good two or three years of use if you keep good care, sometimes even up to five. And the number of charge cycles varies that you can expect, mostly because of how a charge cycle is defined. If you completely empty it, of course, that's one cycle. But if you only drop down to 70%, some of these figure statistics counted that, some didn't. But this graph here illustrates the overall trend. If you use it gently, uh, instead of exceeding the voltage, <coughs> in this case our ideal is 4.2, you'll expect after a large number of cycles to still have good capacity, rather than quickly declining and going into nothing. So, in it, just to summarize everything, what you do want to do, charge frequently instead of deeply, store in a cool, dry place when you're not using it, and when, you, when it's not in use for long periods, keep it around 40%, just remember the magic number. What you don't want to do is charge it when it's cold or use it in excess of heat. Damage it purposely or accidentally in any way or demand excessive current of power from it, or exceed the recommended voltages, you may just end up with a problem like this one up here.